Mary Rosenberg with Breaking Defense. Joining us today is Bill Guyon, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Leonardo DRS Land Electronics. Today, we're going to be talking about assured position navigation and timing and how it can be quickly installed in the tactical fleets of the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. Leonardo DRS is the leading provider of Army platform computing and display systems for battle management. Tell me about your involvement in APNT. Battle management systems or BMS systems um, are widely used uh, both in the, in the U.S. and internationally. And in our company, Land Electronics of Leonardo DRS is the largest provider of these systems. Altogether, over the last 20 years, we fielded more than 300,000 systems to both U.S. and other international, uh, international forces. Critical to every battle management system is uh, knowledge of position location. And that's always provided by the Global Positioning System or, or GPS. Uh, for the longest time, there's been knowledge, awareness of the potential for spoofing or jamming of GPS. And early on in the fielding of battle management systems in the U.S., uh, we started delivering embedded uh, SASM GPSs. These are selective availability anti-spoofing module GPSs. Uh, and this is probably before ap and was a term. This was an effort to uh, try to get ahead of the threat, which was presented by uh, potential adversaries that could jam or otherwise spoof the GPS signal. Now with, uh, with peer adversaries that are, have even greater capabilities, the Army has recognized that uh, assured position navigation and timing is a critical capability uh, because not only battle management systems, but many of our other systems depend upon having assured uh, location and timing data in order to operate effectively. So uh, we have started more than two years ago testing for the integration of the military GPS user equipment or MGUI uh, GPS, which would be embedded into our systems and replace the SASM GPS or the legacy capability. This military GPS user equipment or MGUI is really the foundational element of assured position navigation and timing. And, uh, and as I said before, we've already tested and we're ready to start inserting that ap and capability uh, into our systems. There is uh, a much greater, uh, there was a much more extensive set of other capabilities that uh, the military wants to battle the threat of ap and And in order to make sure that our systems remain relevant, uh, we've also embedded those in our technology roadmap and started to demonstrate those capabilities as well. Thanks, Bill. So what exactly is your approach to ap and How is it unique from other ap and solutions? Yeah, thank you. Thanks again, Barry. Uh, so right now, the, the Army uh, has a couple of different options for uh, assured position navigation and timing capability. Each of those available options are single purpose options, which require the placement of a standalone uh, single purpose box inside of an Army platform. Uh, and unfortunately, Army platforms are really constrained when it comes to space availability. The most unique thing about uh, our offered solution is that we take, uh, we take a product which is already in high volume production and an Army program of record. It already has space claim in Army vehicles. And we upgrade that box by adding capabilities inside of it. This doesn't require the addition of a new box to a vehicle, doesn't require any additional space claim, and doesn't require any additional installation kit. So this, this can uh, per permit uh, easier fielding, uh, easier installation, and it leverages the existing footprint on platforms and the investment that the Army has already made. So this is what the most unique att attribute of our, uh, our ap and solution, the fact that it leverages program of record hardware, which is already fielded or already in production. If the customer is interested in Leonardo DRS solutions for ap and what exactly can you offer them? Uh, one of the things that uh, is important about uh, our offering, in addition to the ability to leverage existing footprint and already paid for Army investment, is the fact that we offer a scalable capability that's not one size fits all. Uh, ap and capability is not cheap, um, but the need for ap and AP capability is wide. Um, because every single vehicle, every single system that the Army has that uses 
either position location or synchronized timing requires assured position navigation and timing. This is a big burden for the Army. And uh, what we're proposing is that the Army have the opportunity to tailor the capability that they field based upon the threat, the risk, and the budget that's available. So some systems may have a full suite of capabilities. Some may have a lesser capability, but all of those capabilities can be housed inside of the same, uh, the same MFOX computer, which we field already to both all Army vehicles and Marine Corps platforms. How does your approach to APNT address the Army's drive toward MOSA and CMOS? So this is important because the Army has had a vision for some time of open architecture and the ability to leverage investment for uh, continued upgrade of capabilities and obsolescence management. We've always been designing our computers uh, with expandability and upgradability and have demonstrated it uh, many times over the years. The systems we currently deliver to the Army uh, are victory compliant. This victory standard uh, was the Army's initial effort to identify uh, interoperability standards so that uh, they could be drop-in uh, plug-and-play capability on, uh, on board Army vehicles. Uh, in addition to providing victory compliant uh, position navigation and timing, uh, we also uh, provide the ability to upgrade the system which has already been fielded. This is in keeping with the spirit of open architecture uh, in MOSA. In the near term and in the midterm, uh, the capability we're offering can help the Army to pull capability left. In the longer term, it's the Army's intent to start fielding uh, a capability called uh, CMOS. Uh, these future CMOS compliant uh, housings or chassis will house a number of uh, interoperable cards inside. And in the future, the Army's vision is that there be APNT cards, which are provided by various uh, vendors, and they'll go and they'll plug and play inside of the CMOS chassis to provide C, uh, APNT capability. For a long time though, there'll be a mix of legacy platforms and CMOS chassis equipped platforms. And uh, the, the threat for the threat of APNT uh, resilience is a constant threat. It's a near-term threat. And it's our position that the Army needs a near-term and mid-term capability. And we think we can offer that. In the longer term, the fleet will be transitioning to CMOS. But that's, that, uh, that transition could take decades. Uh, and in the meantime, the threat is real and, and present. So we think this is a, a capability that uh, meets a, a need that is demonstrated right now in both the Ukraine and Russia conflict. There are uh, widespread reports of jamming, spoofing, and other GPS interference, reminding us that the threat to assured position navigation and timing is real and possessed by our adversaries. What about current Army programs of record and other requirements? How is it that the Army is going about addressing APNT? So assured position navigation and timing is one of the critical capability gaps that the Army identified in their modernization plan. And as such, they've actually identified a cross-functional team or CFT dedicated to addressing and guiding uh, the Army's efforts to address uh, assured position navigation and timing capability, APNT capability. Um, as, a, as an offshoot of that uh, capability uh, effort, the Army has a program of record uh, that is meant to provide uh, tier one APNT capability to the Army force. It's right now programmed to provide maybe up to 200, uh, maybe up to 25,000 uh, systems to the Army fleet. This is far short of all the vehicles and systems that the Army possesses. In fact, the Army possesses hundreds of thousands of vehicles uh, and systems which require assured position, navigation, and timing capability. I'll call those other capabilities or those other systems tier two and tier three systems, systems which aren't currently provided for uh, under the Army's program of record. What we're trying to do is offer the Army a capability which can be ready now, uh, can be delivered sooner and maybe more cost effectively to provide scalable capability to tier two and tier three systems as a complement to the already funded existing programs of record for APNT. So we're not a competitor to the current Army's plans or Army's program of record. What we are is a complement to those, uh, something that would allow for the ability to pull capability to the left in an affordable way and complement the Army's current plans for APNT.
Thanks for your responses, Bill. Appreciate your time. And thank you to everyone for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.